play surges forward. Possibility. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Retro Football. This time, in this episode, this game, Dave, you're with me again from YouTube channel Dave's Game Room. This game really doesn't need an introduction, does it? No, it doesn't. I think you can see from the menu screen, you know exactly what we're playing. And in actual fact, this is a response to a really awesome comment that we got on a previous mm -hmm. Retro Football video. Yeah, I mean... We were always going to include this, guys, in the series, but we've been kind of holding back. We started the retro series off with Pez 3. Dave and I got into a bit of a, not a debate, but we were kind of, it was out of Pez 3 and this, Pez 5, which one of them is the best football game of all time, in our opinions. Yeah. Um, and we're still, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it in this video. So, Dave, this footage you captured earlier today actually natively is that right that's right this is coming off of a real sony playstation 2 console guys so you're going to see this basically as it would look if you fired up a real ps2 right now so back in the day i played this on the xbox oh yeah the original xbox obviously i didn't play it on the ps2 um yeah. Oh, man, look at this. Because Arsenal and Chelsea were licensed, weren't they? They were, yeah. So for this match, I thought I'll choose those two licensed teams to give you a good idea of how the game was. But as you would have seen on the team select screen for the English League, as it was referred to, every other team, of course, besides Arsenal and Chelsea, isn't licensed. So back in the day, did you play this on PS2 or Xbox? PS2. I had this on the PS2, but I did also, call me crazy, I did also pick up the Xbox version. Okay, let's quickly start there then. Is there any difference? I've never played the PS2 version, only ever played the PC and the, obviously the Xbox version. Is the PS2 different in any way to the Xbox version? Gameplay-wise, they're pretty much the same, but of course the controllers are different, so the way the game feels is slightly different because you're using different control systems. Yeah. But in terms of how they look, they look very similar. The Xbox's video output is generally a bit sharper than the PS2, so it looks slightly better on the Xbox. But they run the same, and by and large, it's exactly the same game, and it, it shows really well on both systems. Cool. That's yeah. good to know. So, oh, Henri's in. Oh. Um, I loved that Centenary Arsenal kit. It's kind of a red current sort of colour. It was beautiful. That's right. That Wasn't that their last season at Highbury kit? Wasn't that what I they wore for so. that? Yeah, for their I old stadium. Yeah, I think that's what they it. It's... Yeah, it's, it's kind of ironic in a way, because some would argue, I know me and you would, this was the last great Pez game. Yeah, if you were to ask me that question, this would be the answer. Pez 5, in my opinion, yes, there's been some good Pez games, but I say the word good games since this. This is the last truly great Pez game where I could just keep going back to it for days and days on end in a Master League campaign. Yeah, um... I think out of all the football gaming I've done, and I've done a, a lot of it, this is the game I've played the most in yeah. my in my gaming career, if you like. I put an option file on it like I'd imagine you did, Dave, with the old Max drive. Remember that? Yeah, that's right. Or in my case, it was an AR Max little device, a little USB stick that you could download okay. the save from and then put it on the memory card with the Action Replay Max. Yeah, and that's very similar to what I did. And then... I had a Master League save with Man United um, with all the, the proper kits that someone had made and it was awesome and I spent hundreds, I'm not exaggerating guys, hundreds of hours in that save. Yeah, I, I would say Pro Evolution Soccer 5 is one of the most played games in terms of hours that I put into a game for definite. It's up there, but Pez 3 was pretty close because I loved Pez 3, as I said during our video where we did which Pez was the best one all those months ago. And also, ISS Pro Evolution, me and a friend spent countless sessions playing a Master League on that. Because again, that game was so good. It was really good. But this, if you took this, slapped on some modern day 4K graphics on the PlayStation 5 and Series X, I would absolutely play this again. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've recently had it. I did the review yesterday. It's, it's not... It's not the best remaster, but Rockstar have done it with, with the original trilogy, Grand Theft Auto. Imagine Konami did a remaster. Pez, 
I'm trying to think. PES 3, PES 5, and PES 6, for example. Can yeah. you imagine that? That would be awesome. That would be amazing, and, and I would play it. Yes, you'd still have the same sort of licensing issues and, you know, whatnot, and the squads would be from those games. They wouldn't be up-to-date squads, again, for various reasons. But I'd still play it. I would still play those games. They wouldn't yeah. even need to really touch the gameplay, because the gameplay in those three games, by and large whilst not being perfect, is still good. And you can still play it today and not think you're playing an old game. The AI was so good. The, the way the CPU AI played from game to game was so varied. Again, that's why I spent so much time in Master League. Um, but it wasn't just single-player Master League that was so good in PES 5. I also spent a lot of time... I always remember Friday nights, few beers, have the mates around take it in turns online multiplayer oh wow so you, did you do like a couch co-op sort of multiplayer online where you pass the controller do, to the next person it wasn't really couch co-op one of us would play and basically we'd play against some random guy halfway across the world where wherever he or she may have been and yeah winner stays on and i always used to play as ac I always remember ac milan i used to use online shevchenko was a beast he was. I loved it online, man. It was seamless. It was it was just connecting to a player, found a player, play, match after match. It was so much fun online because, obviously, I think Pez Pro Evolution Soccer 4 was the first time we could take Pez online. Yeah, I think it was. I think that was on, and again, that was on original Xbox and PS2. But the reason I bought both the PS2 and original Xbox versions was mm -hmm. because when I tried to play PES 5 online on the PS2, the online experience oh, okay. was dreadful. And that was why yeah. when, a, when a work colleague of mine at the time recommended the original Xbox for Halo 2 and some other amazing games, I thought I'll pick up PES 5 on the Xbox to see what it plays like online. And of course, with live, it was brilliant. I thoroughly it was, enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah ov obviously that's where I spent my, my time on that platform on Xbox online as well. I, I Like I say, I never tried the PS2. The PS2... For another video, really, guys, but the PS2 did have some issues with, with getting it online and that kind of thing. It is actually why I migrated over and I traded my PS2 for an Xbox because everyone told me, you need an Xbox if you want to consider getting online. Don't bother doing it with the PS2. But anyway, yeah. Um, PS5's gameplay, uh, I mean, visually, looking at it now, it's it's not the prettiest of games. It hasn't aged that well, I guess. Pictures look a bit dodgy still, yeah. Um, but it didn't matter. The the gameplay is always king in football, especially in football gaming. And the gameplay in Pro Evolution Soccer Five was so addictive. It was. I mean, you could say about graphics, and you're spot on. This game has, has aged not great because it's a really old game now. But as EA has shown us countless times, you could have the prettiest football game with all the flashy stuff over the years. But the gameplay, yeah. if the gameplay is not good enough, what's the point? You're just looking at something that looks nice. Yeah, spot on, mate. So, uh, commentary team. We yep. always talk about the commentators on these games. Was, remind Trevor me. Trevor Brookin and it was Peter Brackley on this that's game. It. Yep, that's it. That's right. Trevor, Trevor Brookin would always say, oh, should have got that one in. That's right. He, well, he did on <laughs> he did on PES 2 and it was, it was, a, it was hilarious to hear him say that because sometimes... Was that PES 2? It wasn't PES 2 one. specifically, yeah. Because you take a, a speculative shot that really has got not much chance of going in, let's face it. And that would be his response to Peter Brackley saying, oh, it's just gone wide. Goodness me, she got that one in. And it used to crack me up. Because you'd be thinking, but Trev, I just took a shot from like 40 yards out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, mate, yeah. I, I, for some reason, I thought it was this, was this uh, version when they used to say that. But, yeah, the, the commentary then, it really... It really fitted, it really suited this game well. I really enjoyed the um, PES commentary by now. I thought it was a lot better than, obviously, much earlier Pro Evolution Soccer games. Like, me and you played one last week, didn't we, with Chris Good. James commentating. Yeah, that's right. Um, and this one, <laughs> this one, the commentary is decent, but, I mean, and again, it's with other games, other sports games that have got commentary. It does get repetitive quite quick. You do start to hear the same lines repeated in the same match. Yeah, you do. You yeah. do. But Pez commentary's always been been that way. But I don't know why. I, I'm very biased when it comes to Pez Five. I liked the. I enjoyed the commentary in this game. It's probably because of nostalgia. Yeah, clouded my judgment a bit. But I really enjoyed it. Um, 
content, it was pretty good. Licensing, we've already touched Chelsea, touched on Chelsea and Arsenal being licensed in this, which was cool. We got Stamford Bridge. Yeah. Highbury was in it. You've got yeah. the San Siro, which has been in most or a lot of Pro Evolution games. Um, so content-wise, I mean, it was better back then, content-wise, than some of the more recent PES games, which really kind of watered everything down. You just had so many boring, generic stadiums in, like, PES 2019. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was decent for licensing, this PES was. It was, because since then, Konami went for quantity over quality. So some of the later PES releases, and I'm not meaning to be disrespectful, they've licensed, you know, leagues and competitions that I've personally never heard of. So... Yeah, compared to, compared yeah, exactly. to this, compared to this, that wasn't the case. Yeah, yeah. The, no, it's a good point. They've spent too much money and time on on getting like the Danish league, the yeah. Thai league, etc. But then you're just playing at Rose Park Stadium, which is like Aston Villa's supposed to be Aston Villa's <laughs> fake stadium. Oh, in the Thai league, it, it's just ridiculous. They should have kept it like it was in the old days. Less is more at times, um, and. I, I just Pez Five just did everything much better, and it's a joy watching this footage. It's just a joy. It brings back joy, and it also brings back a tinge of sadness for me because these were good times. Yeah, they were. So for anybody, for instance, now that might have tried that shambolic eFootball 2022, and is sitting there wondering when the next update's going to come, if it does, with the content and fixes that that game really, really needs, which it's not going to get. Fire this up, seriously, because you are going to feel with this game footballing on a console at its best, in my opinion. This is what Konami, for some reason, deviated from. They lost the formula, the magic formula that this game and its predecessors had. And I'm really not sure how they managed to lose it. I agree with what, you're, what you just said there, mate. I do agree, but... The landscape has changed. Now, most people who enjoy this uh, retro football series, they'll also know what, I'm, what I mean when I'm about what I'm about to say, rather. And that is, we were all about gameplay. We yeah. were all about n not so much content, and, and kind of contradicting myself here because I was saying how good the content was in this, but that was just like icing on the cake. We were all about the gameplay, how fluid it was, and how the how varied the AI was. Today. If you just have a look at Twitter and the replies to the official eFootball account, or pe people just go on about player faces. Yeah. I swear, that's all it seems. The majority care about player faces and unlocking the, you know, Neymars and the Messies and that for these fantasy modes. It, back in the day, it weren't about that. It was about choosing your favourite team and you know, winning the league with them in the, within the Master League against an intelligent, varied AI. Exactly, and you, you've, I'm glad you've said intelligent, varied AI because, th again, this is one of the very last Pro Evolution soccer games where you had different matches from match to match. The AI played differently depending on the team it was controlling, and it was believable. It was believable, and if you scored like a 92nd minute winner or a 93rd oh, minute equaliser... Man. You leapt out of your seat because it yes. felt and looked so damn good. You 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 fought for you fought for the result, didn't you? In this, yeah. e even if you were a top side, like when I used to play as Man United at the time, they had some good players, but you'd still fight, especially in the higher difficulties up in six star. Yeah, you'd fight for a, for the result, wouldn't you? And like you say, it would get you out your seat. It doesn't feel like that anymore to me. Football gaming, when, when you score, it's just kind of meh. Exactly. You know, and, that and that comes down, doesn't it, to the gameplay and in particular things like the shooting. The shooting in this game is 10 times more varied than the Pezzes that we've had in recent years in eFootball. It just is. It is. It is. It might be slightly quicker yeah. and a little bit more frantic than modern day pairs. Modern day pairs is very, very slow and quite weighty, yeah. but it's turgid. It's so slow and stiff. It's turgid. Now, guys, I know you've watched this retro football series to listen or watch old football games and, and kind of escape from the modern landscape of football gaming. But it is important to bring up um, where football gaming is now compared to these greats. Because this is a great, which segue, that's the, the, the perfect segue, on to Dave. Yeah. What is the best football game of all time? Pro Evolution Soccer 3? Or Pro Evolution Soccer 5? 
Pro Evolution Soccer 5. Yes! It's PES 5. It, it just is. <laughs> Just, though. just it is, by, it a, just by, by literally it, the smallest it? of margins, it is PES 5. Because there's something about PES 5's gameplay where it's obviously been tweaked and refined that just beats out PES 3. Just. I'd agree with that, yeah. But before we bring this to an end, I'll always remember reading the review in official PlayStation magazine for PES 5 before it hit the shelves. And there was something in the review where it says... The glorious thing about PES 5 is even your nil-nils are satisfying. Yeah, and they're not wrong. They're absolutely um, not wrong. That summed it up for me, and that has been lost yeah. in football gaming completely. As always, guys, thank you for joining us. Let us know in the comments what you think of PES 5. Did you spend a lot of time with it? Is it the best football game of all time? You might not even think it's the best PES of all time, let alone football game. But let us know. Come and get involved, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Take care, guys. Three minutes to go. Chance for a counter then. The defence close ranks really well. Good play. That's picked up by the goalkeeper. Pinhead. 